Uh, hi, good afternoon to all the students who are present today. Uh, I am Madam Gan. So today we're going to do another lesson for English language. And this is for the SPM candidates for the year 2020. So without any ado, I would like to uh, start my presentation. Okay, so let's look at, uh, I will try to read the comments uh, using my handphone. Okay, let me share uh, the screen because today I think it's going to be a long lesson. Okay, hopefully you can see uh, my slide, uh, my screen now. This is sharing. And then let me start. Okay, this is uh, a free online tuition. And it is uh, for today, I'm going to do the lesson. Uh, today is Friday. And then this is the lesson for Form 5. Okay, for this free online classes, they are actually the initiative of three organizations, Cloud Guru Malaysia, EDD Malaysia, and also Academy YouTuber. Okay, so this series, I name it SPM Success Series. So in this series, I will try to do uh, maybe uh, four different parts, and then I will concentrate more on writing. Okay, so today, Remember, it is called SPM Success Series. So today, we're going to look at some uh, questions that could come out in your SPM exam this year. So let's look at formal, formal letters. Okay, uh, what you see here are questions, uh, SPM Paper 1 from the year 1997 uh, to the year 2019. So, 1997 to 2019. Okay. So, let's enlarge this. Let's look at formal letters. So, where are formal letters? Okay. So, in 1998, there was a question on this. Uh, the format is a formal letter to the manager of a factory. So, the task was to request a visit for your school consumer club. So, this is definitely letter of inquiry. Okay, next. In the year 2003, there was also a formal letter to your teacher. Okay, so uh, the task uh, to state the choice made by your class on a trip after the end of the year examination and give reasons for the choice. So, this is a letter uh, giving suggestion. Okay, next. Another letter, formal letter, was in the year 2013 or 2013. So the letter is to the town council. It is a formal letter of complaint about poor condition in in the recreational park. Okay. So later you don't see any letter anymore. There are other topics like talk and so on. So for 20. Uh, 20. Okay, let's take a guess. So, formal letters, let me repeat. Uh, three types were asked. First of all, is formal letter of complaint. Second will be uh, formal letter of inquiry. And the last part is to give suggestion. So, either you complain or you ask uh, maybe to visit a place, a factory, or you can give suggestions uh, about a certain situation or uh, a team. Okay, so just now I told you 1998, 2003, 2013, and maybe this year, 2020, formal letter could be asked. Okay, so formal letter can come out this year. What type? It can be letter of complaint, inquiry, or giving suggestion. Okay, it can come out this year. Okay, 
So there are three types. Okay, let's look at the format of a formal letter. So be careful with all the important uh, information here, okay? First, address of sender. So make sure that if it's a school, uh, if it's about a consumer club, so you have to write your school address. It is, if it is you are a resident, so you have to write your house address. Then you must remember, remember the post or the position of the person you're writing the letter to. Okay, so the post is jawatan. Here will be the principal. And then you must have the address of the recipient. Remember here, when you write the address, the postcode must be in front of the city, okay? And then we have the date. And then don't forget January, you have to spell full spelling, J-A-N-U-A-R-Y. So it must be also uppercase or capital letters. Okay, next. And then we have salutation. Salutation, English, you must write dear. Dear is compulsory for English. Let me change the pen. Okay, so dear is compulsory because without dear, then you won't get the mark for format. Okay, next. Title, you can write problem faced by students in their studies in school, example. Then you have your introduction. Remember introduction, you see? The line is straight here, there is no space or gap. And then for your content, don't forget to write the numbering, like number two, number three, number four, and so on, okay? So remember, you have 12 content points. Here, you can break up the paragraph for the contents, maybe into three paragraphs or four paragraphs, it's up to you, okay? And then we have the closure. Closure, you can write something or you can simply just say, after I hope, you can just say thank you to close. Never write bye-bye, okay, or goodbye. Now to sign off, you have to write yours. Don't forget the S here. Many students tend to forget the yours. Most of you will write your only, okay? So you must write yours faithfully or yours sincerely. And then the signature, and then followed by your name, the name of the sender of the letter, and then you can write the post if you want. If you are the president, you can write the president. If you are the secretary, you can write the secretary. Okay, I hope that's clear. If there's any comment or questions, you can write in the chat. I will try to read uh, on my handphone, okay? So I think you're clear about the format, right? Okay, let's continue. So this is the SPM 2013. So I will try to discuss all the three uh, format which is the first one, complain, then you have inquiry, then you have also suggestion. Okay, so this is SPM 2013. Let's zoom in. Section A, directed writing. So 35 marks and time suggested 45 minutes. You have just returned from a visit to Inda Recreational Park. You found the park in poor condition. Write a letter of complaint to the town council based on the notes you have made. Town Council here will be the Majlis uh, Perbandaran. Okay. So, remember, visit to Indah Recreational Park. And then the park is in poor condition. And then you have to write a letter of complaint to the Town Council. Okay, next. Let's look at the content points. Okay, number one, not enough facilities, C1. So you have to write about no restaurants there in the park. So C2, rubbish everywhere, C3, uh, not enough dustbin, C4, and dirty public toilets, C5, and smelly, C6. Okay, grass not cut, C7, snakes, C8, information lacking, C9, no signpost, C10, vandalism, C11, public telephones not working. Okay, you must remember, and because this is the question from the year 2013, but the question, uh, the DW question, directed writing question, they change it uh, somewhere in the year 2015. Okay, where they ask you to write your own ideas. 
Okay. So if you see the O questions, they are complete. Complete means all the 12, C, C12, C1 to C12, all normally are given. Okay. So you need not give your own ideas. But later on, they change where you have to add maybe three or four. Okay. You have to add three or four of your own ideas. Okay. So you don't see all the all the points given. These are the old format. Okay. Now, when writing the letter, you should remember to lay out the letter correctly. Addresses, date, salutation, title, closing. Use all the notes. Okay. So format one will be the addresses, the sender, the recipient, and also the date. These are considered as format number one. Okay. Number two will be the salutation and the title of the letter. And then we have from three, uh, but format three will be the closing. The closing will be your signature and your sign off, okay? Okay, next. Content points, we did this just now. C1 to C12. Old question paper, they give you all the content points, but later on they change where they are asking you to add your own ideas okay let's look at the format so i'm writing to the municipal council so you can write because you are a resident right so you write your house address so this is your house address number 10 jalan bahagia 1 stroke 13 taman bahagia utama 7079 negeri 9 so who is the person to write to so that is the post right so you can write the director okay then you can write seremba municipal council then you can write the address for example 1220 jalan zabai and so on okay and then don't forget the month the date here yeah? the month is spelled in full okay dear sir that is the salutation and then poor condition of inda recreational park this is the title so can you understand the format Okay, no question so far? Okay, let's continue. Okay, paragraph one. Remember in paragraph one, it is the introduction paragraph. You have to write what are you writing about and who, who are you? You have to introduce yourself. Introduce oneself in the letter. So you can write example, I am a resident of Taman Bahagia Utama and I frequent the Seremban Recreational Park with my family. Okay. I'm writing this letter. So why? Of letter of complaint. So what is letter of complaint? Who will be the resident? Okay. So I'm writing this letter of complaint to draw your attention to the poor condition of the park. Second example, as who are you? The resident. Of Taman Bahagia Utama, I often go to Seremban Recreational Park, especially during the weekends for family outing. I would like to complain. So why are you writing? To complain. Okay. So remember, uh, students or candidates, they always uh, sort of write the wrong words, okay, for complain. So remember, C O M P A P L A I N is a verb. P L A I N T is a noun. So when it is a verb, you can write complain, complain with E D or complaining with I N G. Okay, but for complaint, since it is a noun, you can only put a T or many, you can put complaints with the S. Okay, so verb is kata kerja, uh, noun is kata nama. So example, I want or I wish to complain about dot, 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 dot. okay and number two I have complained a few times to the municipal council okay so saya ingin mengadu here is saya telah mengadu and the last one I'm complaining about saya ingin mengadu or mengadu okay so but T will be a noun so this is a uh, kata nama so I'm writing a letter of complaint about menulis surat aduan. So in the end, this will be aduan. So my first complaint is that 
So uh, in BN will be aduan pertama saya. Okay, so students normally, uh, maybe you know, you're rushing to write the answer, you forget about the spelling. So remember, complain or complaint. Okay, I hope that's clear. Okay, next. Paragraph two. Paragraph two, we are going to write four points. C1, not enough facilities. So there are no restaurants there. Rubbish also is everywhere. And then not enough dustbin. So you can write Seremban Recreational Park is lacking in facilities. Lacking means not enough. There are, there are, there are not any, okay, there are, there are no, okay, there's something wrong here, okay, there are, there are, rent any, so, so you can change this, there are not any, so it means there aren't any restaurants, okay, why are, because of the S here, so there are not any, so you can change to there aren't, okay, I use a pen, so you can see here, but normally in letters, you don't write the contraction. So there are, there are not any restaurants. So you can change to, there are no restaurants. Okay. Where's my pen? Okay, take a red one. You can change this. If you do not want this, you can write, there are no restaurants. Okay, because if you short, shorten this or contract this, it becomes... There aren't any. So it's supposed to be uh, aren't. Okay, but you advise not to use contractions. So instead of writing there aren't any restaurant, you can write there are no restaurant. Okay, so you can forget the not here. So you can write there are no restaurants or cafes at the moment. Okay, so there's a big problem there. Because you can't find restaurants in the park. Okay. With the addition of eateries, visitors will have eateries is places for you to uh, find food. Okay. Uh, visitors will have an enjoyable time with family and friends. So if you add places to eat, uh, uh, family will have more enjoyable time there. Okay, besides the lack of comfortable places for visitors to gather the park, there is rubbish everywhere. So second point, rubbish everywhere. Okay, there are not enough dustbins. So the existing dustbins are, uh, existing dustbins are flowing. So whatever dustbin you have, for example, now you have three. So not enough. So these three dustbins are overflowing. Overflowing means uh, there is a lot of, Rubbish and the rubbish is already uh, or, or has fallen on the ground. Okay, because it's, uh, the beans are already full until maybe you no know, the, the cover is missing and then whatever you throw will be on the ground and so on. Okay, this makes the surrounding unsightly. Unsightly me, it is an eyesore. Menyakitkan mata. Okay, so you need not write too long. Okay, I have four points here, right? So I can write a paragraph for all the four content points. Don't write too long. Stick to about maybe uh, 200 or uh, 250 words. Okay, let's look at paragraph three. So for paragraph three, I'm using content five, dirty public toilet, six smelly, seven grass not cut, and eight will be snakes or dangerous animals. Okay, the public toilet are dirty and smelly. Okay, so that's point number five and six. No one uses them anymore. So this is the explanation or details. There is no schedule cleaning or maintenance of the toilet anymore. So no schedule means there is no timetable for workers to clean or maintain the toilets. The grass near the public toilets is also not cut. So Grass, not cut. Okay. Point number seven. So it has grown too long. The fear of snake, C8, or other dangerous animals lurking among the tall grass keep people away from the toilet because they fear. They are scared of snakes and other animals, so they stay away from the toilet. 
Okay, lurking means lurking, lurking among the tall grass means there are dangerous animals moving in the grass. Okay, so maybe they are hiding in the grass. Okay, let's move on to paragraph 4. Uh, I'm using four content points also, 9, 10, 11, and 12. So 9, information lacking. 10, no signpost. Signpost is papan tanda, uh, labels to show the directions and so on. Vandalism is when you destroy things, okay? Things are destroyed in the park. Public telephone not working. So maybe vandalism here is related to the public phone that had been damaged by uh, visitors to the park. Okay, let's look at the sample paragraph. The lack of information is also confusing. So, lack is kurang, okay? Not enough. So, when there is no information at the park, you are confused. The lack of information is also confusing for new visitors as there are no signposts in the park. So, if, visit, if you visit, you do not know where to go to. Maybe there's a playground, maybe there's a fountain, maybe there is a garden, but you do not know the, the locations. Okay, signposts will help visitors find their way around the park or get to the facilities they require easily. Okay, for example, they can get to the facilities will be toilet. So they wish to go to the toilet. So if there are signposts, they know the direction to the toilet. Okay, sadly, one such public facility provided at the park. What is that? Public telephones are not working. This is because vandals have destroyed them. Vandals are people who, who vandalize things. So this is from the word vandalism. This is because vandals have destroyed them. Vandals are people who destroy things in the park or anywhere else, maybe in the school. So there are students who uh, break the desk or the chair. So they are also called vandals. Okay. So far, any questions? You can ask questions here. Okay, now we go to the last one. We have finished all the content points. We are looking at the last paragraph. For me, here will be only paragraph four. So I have four paragraphs for this letter. So this is the conclusion. You can write, what is the conclusion? You can write your feeling. So it saddens me to see my neighborhood park deteriorate. Deteriorate means from a certain condition, maybe it was well maintained after it became worse. So that is called deteriorate. Okay, so this is your feeling. It saddens me. I appeal to you. Appeal is merayu. You are sort of uh, like begging, okay? I appeal to you to upgrade in the recreational park. So, saya is like merayu, okay? Please clean it up and improve its facilities to bring it back to its former glory. Former glory means uh, it was beautiful once, okay? Or it was a good park once. So, for conclusion, what can you write? You can write your wish, okay? I forgot to write here. You can write your wish or you can write your hope. Okay, that is the letter of complaint. Then you say, don't forget to say thank you. Okay, then that is the, this is the end of the letter. So, the format will be yours faithfully and then your signature for example, if your name is Ahmad bin Zakaria, so you sign here. And then, since you are the resident, there's no need for you to write the word resident here, okay? So, we have finished one formal letter. Okay, any questions so far? Because the next letter will be a different question. So, do you have any problem understanding letter of complaint? I don't see any comment there. So far, I can see there are 18 uh, students watching. Uh, now I can see, okay? So let me look at the comment first. 
Uh, good evening, good evening, yes. Uh, okay. Complain is aduan, complain is mengadu, yes, correct, good. Okay, question from Hazre. Hazre is my uh, student in Form 5 in my school. Teacher for directed writing, we don't need to elaborate too long, right? Yes, that's correct. When you are given the content, you can elaborate with one or two sentences. Okay, two sentences will be better. Okay, overflow is melimpa. Yes, good. Okay, is Ahmad Ali Karim say overflow is melimpa. Okay, thank you. And slightly, and slightly means unpleasant. Yes, it is an eyesore. Eyesore means menyakitkan mata. Yes, thank you, Ahmad. Lurking is terhendak-hendak. Lurking is uh, like the animal bersembunyi di dalam semak ataupun dalam rumput. Okay. Next steward is asking, do we have to write same words as given from the points in the question? No. Uh, you can change the words. Those days uh, when SPM started, yes, you cannot change. But after that, they allow you to change the words in the content points. But be careful, you cannot change the meaning. Okay, so Zakwan is asking, what is deteriorate in Bahasa Melayu? Deteriorate means menjadi semakin teruk. Okay, Zakwan, did I answer your question? Yes, Ahmad said after that, uh, deteriorate means menjadi semakin teruk. Okay, so if the part is in the deteriorating situation, it means that ataman itu menjadi semakin teruk. Okay. Let's continue because we have two more letters. So remember, this is an old question, SPM 203. So those days, they had the two in one. Uh, it's two in one means I give you two choices, you choose one. Okay, after that, they have stopped this type of question. Okay, so this is a question. This is a letter giving suggestions. Okay, let's zoom in. Your class would like to make a trip after end of the year examination. You are the class monitor, okay? You get a message from your teacher who is away from school asking you to discuss with the students where they would like to go. You have been, giving, you have been given the following information on two trips. So you have information about two trips. Write a formal letter to your teacher stating the choice made by your class and give reasons for the choice. So this is called giving suggestion. Maybe uh, you want to celebrate your brother's birthday. Okay, that could be a question. So you're supposed to give suggestions. Okay, remember the trip is after end of the year examination. So there are two choices, two trips. Who are you? Who are you? You are the monitor, okay? Formal letter stating choice of trip. Okay, let's continue. So, there are two choices. One, trip to the city. Another one, trip to the seaside. Okay, so that's what I call two in one. Two in one means I give you, uh, you have two, you have two choices. Then you have to make a choice, choose one, okay? So C1 will be the, remember, you have to choose. So C1 may not be there in the question, but you know that you have to choose. And then you have all the dates, uh, 15 to 17 December will be C2. Duration, three days and two nights will be C3. Accommodation, hotel will be C4. Cost per person, RM120, will be C5, places of interest. You have art gallery, shopping complexes, parks and gardens, zoos and museums. So you have C2 to C10. So normally you have 12, right? So there are two missing contents here. Okay, let's wait and see. So the same thing with trip to the seaside. You have also C1, that is the choice. And then you have C2 to C10. So C2 will be the date, uh, 2nd to 4 December. Duration, 3 days and 2 nights. Accommodation camps, cost per person 80. Activities, swimming, boat rides, games on the beaches, jungle trekking and campfires. 
Okay, remember, um, here you can look at the cost. So this is 120, this is 80. So definitely you, maybe students will choose the cheaper ones. Okay. Here I would like to state also, I use a, I change the pen first. Okay. So you have the word of choice. Okay. I forgot to write here. So choice. Be careful. And the word choose. Okay. Choice is pilihan. So definitely this is a noun. Choose is memile. Definitely this is a verb. So if choice, then you can have more than one. So you can say choices. Okay. So be careful with certain words. Choose, you can say, uh, you can say choosing. But normally you don't say choosing because it is not happening at the moment, right? But you can use ing. You can put ed. Okay. And past time will be, uh, sorry, not ed. Uh, it will be chose. No ed here. Past time will be chose. And then, oh, chosen is perfect tense. Okay. But to write to your teacher to give suggestion, normally you write choose. Okay. Because... Uh, you're proposing something. So it should be in present tense. Okay, remember, choice is pilihan. Choose is memilih. Okay. Okay, let's continue. When writing the formal letter, you should remember to make a choice. Yes. So the moment you see here, I'll change the pen. Highlighter is better. Okay. So the moment you see make a choice or one trip, you know that this is your C1. Or this is definitely a content point. Then give reasons using all the information given on the trips of your choice. So format one, same addresses. Uh, I think I won't repeat this. Addresses mean both the sender and also the recipient. Penganta surat dan penerima surat. Uh, the recipient here is the class teacher. And then don't forget the date. Okay. Format 2 definitely salutation and the title. And format 3 is the closing. Okay. So uh, these are the content points. So my question is where are the points coming from? So maybe you have missing points here. Okay. Don't worry. Once you are able to write everything. Okay. Because this is an old format. And sometimes they do not directly tell you where are the content points, okay? Remember that this question came out in 203, so long time ago, right? So now uh, they are more specific about the contents, okay? So let's look at our choice. We're going to choose trip to the seaside. So again, format. So uh, you can write from your house. Because your teacher is not there, she's not in the school, right? Or you can write both school addresses, it's okay. So this is the address, your address. Or you can write uh, the school address. This is uh, similar, uh, but the teacher, you have to write the school address, okay? So your teacher will be Puan Haslina Hamid. So the address, SMK, your school, and then the postcode and the uh, city and the state. Okay, so postcode in front of CT. So 7170100 Seremban and Negeri Sembilan. And then don't forget January, full spelling, okay? Capital or uppercase. Okay, then the salutation here, Puan Haslina. So dear madam, okay? You write a, female, a male or maybe Encik Hamid. So you can say dear sir. Okay, title, a trip. Uh, for after the end of the year examination. Okay, next. So paragraph one. Normally I give more than one uh, suggestions, but some, because we are rushing, so maybe some will have only one example. Okay, let's look at the first one again. Don't forget, when you write uh, letters, especially formal letters, you must write why you're writing it and who uh, you are, okay? So as a monitor of the class, this is who. 
I had a discussion with the other students in Form 5 Malewa on the choice of trip after the end of the year examination. So who is the monitor? What are you writing? Choice for the trip for end of the year after the end of the year examination. Okay. So this is the first paragraph. Normally, I'll give maybe three examples. Okay. Okay, next. So there are many here. I've, I did the choice C1. So uh, this is the first one. Decided on the trip to the seaside. So this is definitely C1 choice. And then we have C2 date, uh, 2nd to 4th December. C3 duration, 3 days and 2 nights. And then C4 accommodation, camps. C5 will be cost per person, 80 ringgit. Okay, let me check the live chat. Okay, let's continue. So, the moment you say we have decided on the trip to the seaside, you will get C1. Okay, this is C1. The trip to the seaside was a unanimous. Unanimous means a bulat suara. Everyone or every student agree. Okay, they, maybe you had a meeting. So, during the meeting, everybody said, yes, 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 let's go to the seaside. So, everybody agreed. Okay. So that's why you call it unanimous. Okay, so the trip to the seaside was a unanimous choice because the students say that the cost for the trip, which is about RM, 80 per person is cheaper. Okay, okay, so and it is affordable for every student. So when you say cheaper, affordable for every student, these are the parts where you get the missing content points. Just uh, we have missing content point for content 11 and also content 12, right? So the points are coming from there. Okay, besides, remember when you use besides, let me change the pen. Okay, when you use besides, don't put besides that. There is no that for besides, eh? just besides. Okay. There you have besides. The students feel the idea of staying in camps is good, which is which will enable us to enjoy ourselves during our stay at the seaside for three days and two nights. Okay, not only that. Okay, so this is three days and two nights will be point number uh, C3. Not only that, the date proposed that is from 2nd to 4th December is convenient. Convenient means a why. So C2, C3 done. Okay, do we have the camp just now? Yes, yeah, staying in the camp. So the camp is here. So C4 done. Okay, just now RM80 mentioned. So done. Okay. Uh, then we are looking at the date because it is the beginning of the month and many of us will be able to make it for the trip. Many of us will be going for holidays with our family members from the middle of December, as parents who are working have applied for leaves and some plan to stay with their grandparents for the rest of the month of December. Okay. So whatever you write here, those days, uh, we used to tell students, those are the missing content points. But nowadays, you need not worry because all the content points are clearly stated. Okay, next. So... Paragraph 3, I'm using activities. So I have swimming, boat rides, games on the beaches. Okay, moreover, I think that the activities proposed will be enjoyable. The first activity, swimming, is a favorite among the students as they have been taking swimming classes during the extracurricular activities. So swimming done. Okay, Enchi Abu Bakar, the sports teacher, also brought the students to the swimming pool twice a month from March to August this year. Okay, next, the boat rides activity was agreed by most students, except for three who voiced out the problem of getting seasick. Okay, boat rides done. In addition, there are many games we can play on the beaches, like volleyball and building sandcastles. So when you give examples, don't give too many examples, okay? Stick with two or three. Okay, any questions so far? Okay, let's continue. Paragraph 4. So we have T1, 
jungle tracking and campfires. Okay, just now, there was a mistake there. Activity is not C6, okay? So, there is no C6 here. This is 6. And then this is 7. This is 8. Okay, don't worry about the content points. Okay, so we have C9 and C10 here, right? Okay, C9 will be jungle tracking. C10 will be campfires. Since the beach is near a jungle, jungle tracking makes the two, the three day, okay, look at this one. The three day, two nights. So you can put the uh, dash, dash, dash here because it did this is considered as a word. Sebagai satu perkataan, okay? So it becomes the three day, two night trip. So when you have all this dash and so on, you get rid of the days. So you, you cannot write three days and two nights, okay? Because you have already joined this and this is considered as one word. So you can say jungle trekking makes the three day, two night trip less boring. This activity attracts us the minute we saw the list of activities available. So see, uh, Naidan, it will be like going into the unknown where we would not know what lay ahead. The unknown means you do not know what to expect in the jungle. We knew we would be challenged mentally and physically. And on the end of the last night, we can have a campfire. Or you can write the S, we can have campfires. Okay, we can sit around it, sing songs and tell ghost stories. Okay, so we have finished all the 10. Well, remember the 11 and 12 are the reasons. Okay, last one, conclusion. So this is the, uh, you have to summarize. Okay, again, what is your, uh, you summarize? Your hope or your wish. Okay, and then you can also write your, what we have just now, feeling, right? Whether you're happy about it, or whether you're upset about it, okay? Or you're not satisfied, okay? So this one, this will definitely be a great trip. Okay, you're happy. You're going to, uh, you know, you say, oh, I'm looking forward to this trip. The students are looking forward to the trip to the seaside. The activities would help to create stronger ties between students. This is the reason. Create stronger ties between the students. Students uh, will become uh, closer with each other then it will teach us teamwork and we also learn to trust our teammates, okay, or classmates. Okay, so that's the end of the uh, letter. Okay, last format. Yours sincerely or you can write yours uh, faithfully. Remember, yours, okay, the S must be there. So the person is no Juliana Binti. This is the person who wrote the letter, the monitor. No Juliana Binti Muhammad. Okay, so signature. And then remember your name also all in uppercase or Urubasa, capital letters. Okay, so here you have the post. For this letter, the student wrote the post. Jawatan dia. So the post is class monitor of Form 5 Malewa. Okay. So we have finished the second formal letter. Okay, now we are going to look at the last one. Okay, let's take a break so that I can read your questions. Okay, question. Uh, Ahmad is asking, I do not have any questions at the moment, teacher. Okay, uh, no need to ask the teacher to agree with us. I don't understand. Uh, the asking is whether uh, Puan Haslina has to agree. No, no need. Okay, so create stronger ties, mengukuhkan hubungan persahabatan, yes. Okay, good. Some of you are helping each other out with the meaning of the English words. Okay, good. Okay, let's continue. Okay, letter of inquiry. Sample question. You will be asking, maybe you are wondering, why teacher, where's the question? The question is from the year 19, 19, 1997. So, it is not available on the internet. Maybe... Uh, in schools, we have the old books, no? The old SPM books, maybe the question is there, but I couldn't find. So I'll give you an example. 
Okay, so this is a letter of enquiry. Enquiry is uh, memohon atau bertanya tentang sesuatu. Okay, let's look at the example. Zoom in. You are the secretary of the English Language Society of your school. The society has decided to organize a visit to a batik factory with the help of the information in the tourist brochure. Brochure is what? Uh? Brochure is like a leaflet. Okay, leaflet is like a piece of paper where you can fold it and then uh, on the paper, there will be information about a place. Maybe if it's a state of uh, Negris Milan, so on that uh, on that brochure, you can see uh, interesting places in Negris Milan, places for you to find food, places for you, maybe a suggestion for you to uh, buy handicrafts and so on. Okay, there is a brochure. Write a letter to the manager requesting permission for a visit. Okay, so who... Who are you? You are the secretary of the English Language Society. Okay. Where are you going? You are going to visit a batik factory. And then remember, this is a letter to the manager. So the post definitely will be the manager. So what is the purpose? To get permission to visit. Permission is kebenaran. Kebenaran melawat. Okay. So this is the uh, some information on the brochure. Okay, Indah Batik Center, 12 Jalan Muda, 7600, Kuala Terengganu, Terengganu. Welcome tourists, Sunday to Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. So, uh, if you look at the old format in those, uh, those years, from those years, the uh, content points are not clearly stated. So those days, uh, students, they had to struggle more to find the content points, okay? So highlights, free souvenir pack for purchase over 50. They give you some souvenir if you buy more than 50. Watch batik printing process. Buy products at a discounted price, at discounted prices. Guided tours, packed lunch available at request. RM 10 ringgit per packet. Okay, so those days, candidates had to struggle with this. They'll be, they'll be asking, uh, where, 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 where's the content point? Okay, so in your letter, include the following information. Asking for permission to visit. This is definitely a point. Date, day and time. So one, two, three. These are all points, contents. Okay, objectives of the visit. The moment you see objective, you know that I need to give C1 and also C2. I must give two objectives. So my content points are here. So if you compare uh, candidates uh, for the SP examination, the, uh, now and those days, you are lucky because you are given the content points. Okay, those days they struggle. Okay, next, three choices of activity. So definitely C, C and another C. So we have three content points here, okay? Number of students and teachers on the visit. Mode of transport. Okay, there's a comma here. Mode of transport. Name of school and contact number. Okay, so these are all the content points. Okay, next. So we have C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6, C7 and 8, then 11 and 12. Okay, so the content points are there. Okay, C1, asking permission, C2, date, C3, day, C4, time of visit, C5, C6, objective of the visit, C7, C8, C9, three choices of the activity, C10, number of students and teachers on the visit, C11, mode of transport, mode of transport, jenis pengangkutan, and then C12, name of school and contact number. Okay. So when writing your letter, you must use appropriate format right to the principal. So now this is writing to the principal. Is it principal? It's writing to the manager, right? So sorry for my mistake. Okay, so this is wrong. This is the manager of the... Is it manager? So let's check again, sorry. Okay, let's go back. Yes, it is to the company, okay? Okay, so let's continue. Format number one will be the addresses. 
sender, recipient, the date, uh, format to, salutation, and the title. And then the last one is the closure or closing. Okay. So here, format. Since this is a society, don't forget, you have to write the society. So the English Language Society, then the name of the school and the address. Okay, question? Any question? Okay, next. Then, don't forget this. The post. Post is Jawa Tan. So, the letter is to the manager. Okay, Indah Batik Center. Some students ask, teacher. Okay, I purposely did this. Okay, I'm going to use a red pen. Or, yeah, a red pen. The manager. Okay, so here, teacher, can I write all uppercase here? Okay, so my answer is it is not a problem to do this. Okay, but try not to. Okay, so don't, but don't forget the comma. There is a comma here. Okay, some students tend to do this because in the brochure it's written as in the Batik Center with all uppercase. Okay, but you try not to write like this. Okay, okay next. Let's change to the highlighter. So don't forget postcode Kuala Terengganu. And then the state Tranganu. So we have then salutation, dear sir, and then request to visit. Request to visit, no two, uh, no double two. Request to visit, uh, request to visit in the Batik Center. Okay, don't forget the date. Okay, next. Paragraph one again. Who, who is writing the letter? And why are you writing the letter? What is the objective or what is the purpose? Here will be the Purpose, tujuan. Tujuan surat itu, eh. Purpose of the letter. Okay. So, C1, definitely asking for permission to visit. Okay. Okay, question. From Ahmad, teacher, do we need to write the name of the manager if it is not given? No. There is no need to write. Uh, actually, you need not write. Even, for example, if you know the principal of your school, uh, you need not write his name. Okay, the post. Remember, the post is more important than the name. Okay, next. Also, do we have to write our name or another name for the name of the sender? Up to you. You can write your own name, the, your real name, or you can just create a name. Okay, again, another question by Farah Liza. Okay, uh, preferably just manager, yes. Yes, that's correct. Because I didn't mention the name, right? I mentioned the post. Okay, good question, students. Okay, next. So, C1 definitely is asking permission to visit. Okay, we came across, came across here means you accidentally read. Bukan sengaja baca, eh? terbaca. Atau ternampak. Okay, so we came across advertisement brochure welcoming tourists to visit in the Batik Center. As the English Language Society is planning to organize a trip to Terengganu during the end of the year holidays, we are requesting your permission, okay, requesting your permission to visit the center. So this is uh, who? English Language Society. Who? Okay, what is requesting permission to visit the center? Okay. Or you can write I, the Secretary of the English Language Society, am writing this letter to request. So, request is the purpose. So, this is the Secretary. The first one, there is no Secretary. You can see, just the English Language Society, right? But the second one, uh, second example, you have the Secretary. So, this is also who. So, I, the Secretary of the English Language Society, am writing this letter to request for a visit to the Indah Batik Center. Some of the members came upon your brochure uh, advertising about tourist visits to the center. Okay. Next, uh, writing C2, C3, C4. Date, day and time of visit. Okay, the society organized a one-week trip to Trangano in December 2020. The visit to your center is on 5th December uh, 2020 at 10 a.m. And it is on Thursday. So we have date. Where is the date? Here. 
Where's the day? Thursday, yes, here. And then time will be 10 a.m. So C2, C3, C4. Okay? Definitely, you need not elaborate on the day, date, and time, right? When, if this type of question comes out in the exam. Okay. Second example. The trip to Trangano is for a week from uh, 2nd to 8 December 2020. We have planned to visit your centre on Thursday, the 5th December, 5th of December. We will be arriving at 10 a.m. after having breakfast at a food court near your Batik Centre. So, date, day, Thursday, 5th, day, time, 10. Okay, so look at the spelling of or the way you write the date. Okay, you can write like this. Just 5th December or you can write 5th with TH. But the moment you have TH, you must write off. 5th of December. Okay, so be careful with TH because students stand, for example, everything also they put TH. Like first, you have to put S, T. Am I right? Second, you have to put N, D. Okay. Third, you have to put uh, R, D. Okay. Fourth, you have to put T, H. And then fifth also, T, H and so on, right? So sometimes you forget. For example, you write 13th. You remember the R, then you put R, D. So that is wrong, okay? The thinth. So this is th. So my advice would be whether you want to put the th, the st, the nd, or the rd, it's better not to write. Okay? Just write 5 December. Okay. Any question? Now let's continue. So we have... Okay, here you can see... Uh, the content points are all over the place. It means that they are not in sequence. It's not like C1 first, then followed by C2, C3, C4. Those days, uh, you have to sometimes uh, jump all over the place. Maybe C1, and then you have to go to C5, C6, okay? So now will be C10 and C11 because they are the most suitable number of students and teachers on visit and mode of transport. So you can write. Let me change to blue. Blue is easier for you to see, okay? There will be 40 students, so number of students, and four teacher advisors on this tour. We have chartered a bus for the trip to Trangano. So use the word chartered, okay? Please use the word chartered. Chartered is like kami sudah menempah. Okay, a menyewa bus. Okay, any question? Let me refresh and see your comments. Okay, no. None, eh? Okay, let's continue. So, there will be 40 students and 4 teachers advisors on the trip. We have chartered a bus for this trip to Terengganu. Kami telah menyewa a uh, bus. But don't use had. Okay, use have. Because have is still in present and then you have not done the visit. The visit is going to be soon. So, better use present tense or uh, present perfect tense. Okay, for the time being, 32 members have registered for the trip. So that's why I use have, okay? Because the trip is not done yet. There will be four teacher advisors accompanying us. Accompanying is money. So you can use the word accompanying is a good word. And also you can use the word chartered. The teacher advisor, Puan Ramla Hussein, has also booked our school bus. Okay, questions? Okay. Question uh, from Chia Jingchong. Is this directed writing? Yes. These are the uh, series for SPM. So I start with possible questions that can come out in directed writing for this year. Okay. There are three types of writing. So to, uh, this week we're going to do uh, let, uh, formal letters. And then next week will be report. And then followed by article or speech. Okay. So we are spotting some possible questions. But I advise you to learn everything, okay? All the formats. Okay, next. Paragraph 4. Using C5 and C6. Remember, there are objectives of the visit. Your centre is one of the largest batik handicraft centre in Terengganu. Okay, this is 
similar to your format now, where objectives are, are stated, but you do not know what are the objectives. So these are considered as own idea. Okay, this sort of question may come out, may come out in your exam. So they are own ideas. Okay, next. So your center is one of the largest batik and handicraft center in Terengganu and attracts a large number of visitors to go on an excursion every year. Excursion is like a visit. Okay, another word for a visit. The objective of the visit, okay, is or are. Okay, these are the mistakes, okay. So you have S here. Definitely this is not is. Okay, some students tend to write this because you think it is one, no. The moment you write S, definitely this one will be R. Okay, because you are stating two objectives. But if you want to write uh, separately, so the objective, no S, of the visit will be is. Okay, if you combine, definitely objectives are. So the objectives of the visit are to expose students to a traditional culture of Malaysia and so two ideas are join with the linker and okay so and learn the skill of batik printing so why do you go there so students will learn a traditional culture of malaysia and learn the skill of batik printing so definitely here will be r and here must be objectives ves okay okay next many of our members are in form four and would like to take up new skills for the english project next year Hence, we would like to expose our members to the art of batik printing. So maybe for the English society, you have projects, okay? So next, paragraph 5, C7, C8, C9. Three choices of activity. Okay, where do the choices come from? Okay, let's look at the brochure again, okay? I think I better... Okay, show you uh, the advertisement. Yeah, I forgot to show you the advertisement. Okay, so here the advertisement in the brochure. So activities are here. Okay, if you get this type of question, activities are in the brochure. So what activities? Free souvenir is an activity. It's purchase eh, when you buy something. So this is not activity. Watch batik printing process. Yes, activity. Buy products. Buy is an activity? No. Guided tour? Yes. Guided tour is an activity. And maybe, uh, are you going to have lunch there? It's also part of your activity. So, these three are activities. So, you better be careful, okay? So, if you get a brochure, read the brochures. Be, uh, read the brochure because in the brochure, there will be information related to the question. Okay, that's why here... Okay, we have three choices of activities. Okay, let's look at the answers. Okay, C7, C8, and C9. We are interested in watching the whole process of batik printing and see how the prints are prepared before the actual printing takes place and the processes thereafter. So it means you want to see how they make the batik and then see after they make the they paint the batik and how later on they turn it into cloth, okay? And the processes thereafter means the next process, next and next and next, okay? As this is an educational visit, we would also appreciate it if you could arrange for a talk. So here we have watching the process and then there we have a talk on batik printing in Malaysia during the guided tour. So we have two. One, watching the process. Second, the guided tour. And in the tour, you have a talk. Okay, the talk will help to explain the history of batik. The reasons batik is now becoming popular in Malaysia. Okay, there is something missing here, sorry. And the type of batik. So the missing word here will be and. Okay, so the talk will help to explain history of batik, the reasons that batik is uh, popular now and the types of batik. As we are arriving at 10 a.m., we are also requesting for packed lunch for 44 people. 
So the last one is you want to have lunch there. So you have C7, C8 and C9. Okay, so be careful with questions where you have a leaflet or brochures. Okay, the informations are, the information is there. Okay, the details. Okay, next, paragraph 6. Okay, be careful with this because C12 is asking you to name the school and then the contact number. So stick to this example, okay, if you get this sort of question. We are certain that the trip is going to be the highlight of our trip in Trangano. Please, keep, this is the ending, yeah? So please, because it is paragraph 6, we are certain, certain means yakin, that the trip is going to be the highlight of our trip in Trangano. Please give us a favorable reply. Favorable reply, uh, reply means uh, jawapan or how to say in BM? Favorable reply. Jawapan yang memihak kepada kami. Okay. It means that you want the manager to say, uh, to say yes, 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 you can visit our factory. Okay. So please give us a favorable reply at your earliest convenient. Okay. Secepat mungkin eh. And address your address your correspondence to correspondent ni uh, surat menyurat okay so address your correspondence to the secretary okay sorry here let me change the pen so this is a comma not a full stop so this is a comma okay okay so the secretary, the English language society, comma, uh, this is a comma, then the address, the name of the school and the address, and then don't forget this, the contact number of the school is, then you can write the number. Okay. Okay, next. Uh, second example, kindly address your correspondence to the address below. Remember, correspondent is surat menyurat. Okay. So kindly address your correspondent to the address below. The secretary, again, I don't know why I put a full stop there. Maybe, you know, I was tired. Okay, comma, okay. It's not a full stop. Okay. So the secretary, comma, the English Language Society, comma, then the name of your school, then the address. And then uh, you can also contact the school at. So you can also contact the school at. But here, the contact number of the school is. So you have two choices to write with the first example or to write with the second example. Okay, who knows? This sort of question will come out this year, right? Okay. Questions? Okay, next. Okay, this is paragraph five. Sorry, this is paragraph 6. So, this is definitely paragraph 7. Okay. So, paragraph 7, conclusion, summary. Okay, what do we summarize? Again, your hope, right? So, don't forget we have the hope or the wish. So, first example, simplify everything. I hope you will be able to grant us permission. Grant is memory. To grant us permission to visit your center. I hope you will be able to grant. We'll be able. So, because it's not yet happening, right? So, saya harap anda ataupun tuan boleh memberi kebenaran, okay? Grant us permission to visit your center. We are willing to accept an alternative date, hari lain, a different day, a different date. Okay? We are willing to accept an alternative date if the proposed date, tarikh yang dicadangkan. Alternative date is tarikh yang lain. Proposed date is tarikh yang dicadangkan. It's not convenient for you. Not convenient is not suitable. Okay. Second example, a short one. We look forward to receiving a favorable reply from your company soon. So you can choose to write this, a longer uh, paragraph or closing conclusion or a shorter conclusion. Okay. Looking forward means... Uh, kami berharap untuk mendapat jawapan yang uh, memihak kepada kami, okay? Okay, question. I can see questions here. Uh, the next one is a company. Ahmad say it is a uh, kata kerja, yes. Excursion is lawatan, yes. It is a noun. 
Okay, next. Certain means yakin, correct? Favorable is a suai. Memihak pada kami is good. Uh, the address will be given in exam. Yes, address of the uh, manager, right? The company center, yes. It will be in the brochure. Okay. Because question for Ahmad. Is it fine to write a non-existent address? Yes, definitely. Uh, we are not going to... Uh, Google or search for the addresses, okay? Uh, there is no need to write uh, address of the maybe Batik Centre, no. Okay? You can create your own name for the Batik Centre. Oh, no, no. The Batik Centre name is given. The address, if it's given, you have to write. But if it's not given, you can write your address. Normally, for a brochure, definitely there will be a centre, the name of the centre and the address, right? But if it's not there, you can create your own address. Okay, last format. Yours faithfully. Don't forget the S again. Yours, okay. Faithfully or sincerely. So, this is the secretary. Her name is Juliana Adriana Ben Muhammad Zain. So, signature, name, or uppercase or Urubasa capital letters. And then the post. Jawatan eh. So, the post will be Secretary of the English Language Society. Okay. Okay, we have reached the end of our uh, lesson for today. So, the first spotted format for directed writing is formal letters. So, any question? So, I'm going to, should I end this? Okay, I'm going to end the show and let's look at your questions. Okay, stop screen. I'm back on here, okay? So, if, because if I share... Uh, okay, you can see me now. I'm back on there. So, if I share a small screen, maybe you can't see the slides. So, that's why I shared the bigger screen for the slides. Okay, questions. Okay, questions. Do I have questions? Sometimes I have to refresh the live chat. Okay. Questions. Uh, Ahmad, how about the address of the sender? Uh, address of the sender, definitely. If it's an uh, English language society or maybe science society and so on, because I'm looking at yeah, the, the phone here. So if it's uh, like English society or science or geography, uh, geographical club or science club or... What else? Maths uh, club and so on. You can write the address of your school. Okay. Anything else? Uh, Chia Jing Chong, your explanation very clear. Thank you. <laughs> because I try to go slow. Normally, I'll talk quite fast in the class. Okay. No question for Hazri. Okay. Hazri is my student. The others, the others, I'm not so sure whether you are from my school. Okay. Thank you for attending the the live lesson today and then uh, although I try to spot uh, the directed writing format but my advice is still you need to learn all the formats right so we have letters formal and informal then you have speech or a talk then you have article and then you also have report okay so next week maybe I'll do on reports because reports there are two different types of report okay any question Thank you, yes. You're welcome, Ahmad. Okay, anybody else? Okay, it's already 6 uh, 14. I was expecting it to be longer <laughs> because there were three different uh, letters. When have live again? Okay, I try to do it next week, also on Friday, because some slots are already taken up by other teachers. Okay, so. Um, I'm going to end the class today. Uh, I hope that uh, you will benefit from this lesson and you have a better picture of how to score for your paper 1 SPM. Okay, remember paper 1 you have directed writing and continuous writing. Okay, so bye-bye and thank you again. Don't forget I'm Madam Gan. Okay, see you and thanks. <laughs>